Hello everybody, I'm Jason Silas with KUM Digital and for those of you who watch our live streams very, very often, you know the venue right now. We are live at the Department of Homeland Security and Civil Defense in Agana Heights right next to Government House. We want to wish you and yours a very happy holiday season, but that's why we're here because we're talking about a possible weather condition that may threaten Guam right now. We um, very interesting and surprising news as earlier this morning Guam was declared to be in a tropical storm watch and that's alongside our brothers and sisters up in the northern Mariana Islands for Saipan, Rota and Tinian. A tropical storm watch once again. Um, a weather system is out on the water right now about to the southeast of Guam. Um, so conditions may be interesting in the next couple of days especially with the Thanksgiving Day uh, holiday. Um, of course, you know, you know the deal. We're going to go set up our mic in there and then show you exactly what's going on. So stay tuned. Starting soon. Chip. Hello. How's it going? Thanks. Happy, happy birthday, Chip. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, happy birthday, Chip. Yeah. 35th anniversary of my 39th birthday. <laughs> What's the next storm name? Kamagi?
Hey man, Black, Black Friday's coming up in a couple days. Oh, that's I thought they for like five bucks on Amazon. Sell. Okay, once again, everybody, uh, Jason Salas and Ken St. Nicholas here, and we are stationed at uh, the Office of Civil Defense where a heavy weather briefing is scheduled to start in just a few moments with that weather system that uh, not a lot of people saw coming. Um, these experts now, of course, that watch the weather, um, they've been tracking this uh, for some time. If you actually go on um, weather.gov slash G-U-M, you can actually see all of the projections. And once again, as always, they update the satellite graphics um, four times daily, every six hours. 7 1 7 1 7 a.m. 1 p.m. 7 p.m. 1 a.m. and you can get the um, uh, projected movement of the weather system. Guam is currently in a tropical storm warning for the burn. Here's Chip Guard with the NWS. Everybody doing okay? <laughs> I didn't expect to see you this morning. Well, same here, sir. I know. Yeah. Come on in. And, uh, this is Tropical Depression 29W heading south of Guam. Advisory number one. Next slide, please. This is a visible picture. You notice uh, it's quite a consolidated quite a bit since yesterday. The low level, as you'll see in a little while, is actually south of all of this convection. And uh, the track will take it south of Guam. We go, this is a visible picture. The next picture is the color infrared. So the bright red indicates really heavy rain, and the, uh, the green is light rain, the yellow is moderate rain, that bright red is really heavy rain. We're gonna see some of that as the system moves uh, through the Marianas or uh, south of the Marianas. And uh, it's moving at a pretty good clip. Next, this is the water vapor. So as the storm moves to the south, it's going to start to interact with a trough over here and it's going to slow down and it's going to start moving to the northwest. That could delay the, those gale force winds, those 39 mile per hour winds, it could delay them getting out of our area. So we'll have to keep a close watch on that. There's actually another storm over here that's uh, starting to uh, develop, but we won't talk about that one until we get this one out of the way. Next. And here's a visible picture, the, the center is sitting down here somewhere and uh, the track is predicted to take it uh, south of uh, the Marianas. Next slide. This was a scatterometer. Scatterometer shows us the wind speed and direction over large <coughs> swaths of the ocean. This is, uh, this is 8 degrees, 10 degrees, 12 degrees. So this is where the storm was located, somewhere around 9 degrees earlier this morning. And uh, 
But you can see all the strong winds, those red winds up there, 30, 35 mile per hour winds, some even 40 miles per hour. So uh, they'll be moving into our area later on. Next. The Typhoon Warning Center put out tropical depression with a pretty small wind radius. Actually, they had it going halfway through Guam. Now, yesterday we had a lot of products out, okay? We had high surf out, we had small craft out, we had hazardous seas out, we had gale warnings out. All of these different kinds of products, we figured the best way to do it is go ahead and issue the tropical storm warning and extend those winds to cover all of these southern Mariana Islands. That, we consolidate all of those into the tropical storm warning, and uh, that's going to be... Uh, create less confusion than having all of those storms. And if the storm, and if they uh, upgraded it to a tropical storm, then we'd have to jump through hoops to get that, uh, to get all those things changed. So right now we got time to deal with the uh, tropical storm warning. And uh, so that was, was the decision we made. They didn't really make a decision to uh, warn on this thing till uh, about five o'clock this morning. So. Uh, so four o'clock, we were talking to them. They hadn't really made up their mind yet. So, and we didn't get the uh, product. We didn't get the actual warning till about seven o'clock this morning. Next. So you can see the thinness of this. So the track, there's pretty good confidence in the track. And uh, but this is a kind of an unusual wind distribution. But that's what you get when you get these big monsoon depression type development so and that's exactly what we have it's pretty late in the year to see a monsoon depression but that's what we have with fairly weak winds near the center and and strong winds along the periphery especially the south east and north next so 7 a.m this morning storm was located at 9.4 north latitude 150.2 east longitude about 465 miles southeast of Guam, 295 miles southeast of Saipan and Tinian, and 470 miles southeast of Rota. It's currently moving toward the west-northwest at 17 miles per hour. That's pretty quick. We expect to continue this track through Wednesday, then turn to the northwest on Thanksgiving Day. But it's going to slow down when it makes that turn. Current intensity is 30 miles per hour sustained wind with gusts of 40 miles per hour. There's really gales that extend north of this storm. So uh, I won't be surprised if sometime during the day they upgrade it to a tropical storm. If they do, the name would be Kamuri, Japanese name. It means crown. Okay, and uh, wind field, we don't have any damaging winds yet, per se, uh, uh, in associated with the storm. Destructive winds, none yet. Typhoon winds, we don't expect any. We really don't expect destructive winds, but we could get fairly close to destructive winds. <coughs> CPA likely early Wednesday morning around 4 a.m. And that's pretty much because of the rapid movement. That doesn't mean the worst conditions will be, be over with. Next slide. So we're looking for the onset of 39 mile per hour winds this evening. The onset time of sustained the uh, the destructive winds, we're not expecting them at this time, nor any typhoon force winds. Maximum sustained winds we're looking at are 50 miles per hour with higher gusts over the Southern Marianas. Next. Seas, 15 to 18 foot open ocean, 12 to 15 foot surf. Places like Pago Bay and uh, Inarahan Bay and Talapopo Bay, we can see some inundation, maybe two to three feet. When we start seeing uh, Waves up over 13 feet, we start to see coastal inundation. Places like Jeff's Fires Cove, the elevation rises up very rapidly, so they're probably not going to see any inundation uh, uh, at Jeff's, but on the on the coastal areas they will. And high tide information, this is your high tide information. We always look at high tide, we always look at low tides. If it hits at low tide, we just thank God it hit at low tide. But these are the times, and uh, so we see fairly early morning and uh, early evening. Next. We're looking at four to five inches of uh, rainfall through tomorrow. 
Uh, more if it passes closer, slows down, and less if it speeds up or moves farther away. The flash flood watch is possible this afternoon, and flash flood warnings may be issued later tonight or tomorrow. Next, please. So currently, Guam Road attending Saipan are in a tropical storm warning. So we anticipate damaging winds this evening. Uh, next. So we're looking at tropical storm. Well, we're looking for a low end, a category A tropical storm, and those are 39 to 50 mile per hour winds. Lots of dead limbs and a few green limbs, lots of leaves blown off the trees. Some secondary lines are down due to fallen limbs. Some damage to poorly constructed structures. They have to be really poorly constructed, though. And very strong rip currents, actually strong rip currents. Low level coastal flooding, two to three feet on the eastern exposures. Next. We always say to plan for one category higher. We, so we'll just go to tropical storm category B, maybe 50 to 60 mile per hour. Uh, lots of dead limbs and some large limbs down. Some damage to poorly constructed buildings. A few secondary lines are down due to falling uh, uh, limbs and mostly. Roofing tin may become airborne at these wind speeds. Poorly constructed signs are damaged and strong rip currents, uh, low level, very strong rip currents, and of course the low level coastal flooding. Now, somebody asked about Christmas decorations. That's a good question. I think Christmas decorations are okay if they're well put up, but if you've got like plywood that's being propped up, I think the winds are going to carry that away, so you probably want to take down anything that's uh, like light materials that are not well, well secured. Uh, next. So we're looking at tropical storm category B, maybe, maybe just category A as it passes to the south of us, around 200 miles to the south. Now that could be significantly closer, you know, maybe 50 or 100 miles closer, if that thing starts to consolidate more to the north. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, the winds that we're expecting aren't going to be much stronger than the winds we expected from the gale, from the high pressure uh, area that we were talking about yesterday. So next. And worst conditions late tonight, early Wednesday. <coughs> Uh, keep alert for changes such as relocations, erratic movement. That would be more northward movement, really. More rapid movement, more northward movement. I don't expect rapid intensification. There's a lot of shear on this system, so uh, it's not going to intensify rapidly, but, but still it's uh, with the big high to the north and the low pressure associated with that storm, we've got a very strong pressure gradient, and that's what drives the wind. So. Updates will occur every three hours. Once the storm gets in the radar range, every hour. Now, the thing is, the this, the low level part of the system is dislocated from the upper level part of the system. At least they're tilted, and probably dislocated right now. So, what that means is, is that if the storm stays a couple of hundred miles away, we're not going to be able to see the low level. We'll just be able to see the rain and the, the upper levels of the storm. As it moves closer, we'll be able to see what, what some of the winds are, but if it stays uh, you know, 150, 200 miles away, we're not going to get useful wind data because uh, we're going to be looking too high up into the storm. But at least it will tell us what kind of winds we're going to get as, as, they, uh, as the uh, storm gets close to it, or as the rain gets close to us, and it'll also tell us where the heavy rain is. So hopefully the radar will stay up. You know, sometimes the radar goes down, and the reason it, what happens is the maintenance people are up in Anderson, and so if the winds are strong, they won't come down and start the generators until the winds die down. So that's the situation. So we, uh, we hope, hopefully, the, uh, the power will stay up and we'll have uh, radar coverage. So that's about it. Any questions? Oh, yeah. Any questions, I mean, about the storm? Okay, we'll go outside and uh, we'll uh, do some work with the uh, media.
Okay, everybody, so once again, you heard it from the man himself, Chip Guard, the senior meteorologist at the National Weather Service. Um, interesting next 40 of hours, it would seem, for not only those of us on Guam, but our friends up in the northern Medianas, once again, Saipan, Tinian, and Rhoda. Um, the condition, as, as you heard Chip say, or if you're just tuning in right now, Jason Salas from Civil Defense, Ken Sir Nicholas behind the camera, but um, interesting conditions right now as it seems there is a weather formation. Chip was saying, of course, we are in a tropical storm. Warning at this time, he does not see uh, typhoon force winds and severely damaging winds affecting our island at the moment. That, by all means, that, that does not mean um, situations could change. Mother Nature, of course, um, has their own agenda, uh, situations may change. And of course, because of the Thanksgiving holiday coming up, you know how we do things on the island. People are starting to clear the yard, they may be setting up tarp, uh, people are expecting large parties, you're gonna be outside cooking. Um, so you would be wise, I know we're gonna get Jenna um, Gamindi in here, uh, she is one of the senior managers here at Civil Defense to talk to you about how you and your family can certainly stay safe, as well as Chip, he'll come out and do some Q&A with us um, about what conditions are, but uh, Chip, my friend. Yes, sir. Once again, good to see you as always. Yes, I bet. Okay, and <laughs> ironically so, we, it was almost a year to the day, I remember, we were here because there was a storm that um, had a little bit of, a, of an effect on us last year. Fortunately, that proved um, not to be anything damaging, but interesting how these things happen. Yeah, it is, and, uh, you know, we put out predictions in uh, June, and uh, we uh, predicted a concentration of storms in October, November, December, so it's not disappointing us. So, uh, Never a boring day for you guys as meteorologists over there. No, nah, no, nah, this is a natural laboratory out here. <laughs> so anyway, it's not a barn burner. It's uh, quite a ways from us. But we've got this big, strong pressure gradient between the high, this big, strong high up to the north and the low pressure, the storm, down to the south. And it's the pressure gradient, that is the change in pressure over a certain distance, that really drives the wind. So now we have a big change in pressure over a fairly small distance. So that's what's generating a lot of these winds. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we had a lot of products out looking for gales. We had gale warnings out. We had high wind warnings out. And again, gale, just for the uninitiated, that's about a 39 miles per hour or higher, right? Right, right, to about 47, 50 miles per hour. So gales, they, they, they are for the warnings over the water, and then the high wind warnings are for warnings over the land. So with the tropical storm warning now that we, uh, that the Typhoon Warning Center actually issued their first warning uh, on Tropical Depression 29W that about four o'clock, well, actually about seven o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so with that, we've consolidated all of those other things into the tropical storm warning. So it, it makes it a little cleaner for people. They know how to deal with with tropical storms much better than they know how to deal with some of these other uh, products that they don't see very often. Mm -hmm. So so we figured the best thing to do is uh, go ahead and, and uh, issue a tropical storm warning for today and tonight and maybe tomorrow. And, and what that'll do, they'll give people some time to, uh, to batten down the hatches. In other words, they need to pick up loose objects. If they've got Christmas decorations that are out and, are, and they're not well secured, they need to take them down. I was about to say, I like that part of your presentation because you know, everybody's got, you know, these days, you've got Rudolph in front of, you know, in yep. front of the yard, you've got all the elves and everything like that. You've yep. got LEDs strewn all over the place and everything. That could prove to be quite dangerous if conditions change. Well, I'm more concerned about the damage that it would do to their, uh, to, to their stuff. Uh, mm. I don't think the winds, now if the winds get up over 50 miles an hour, then we would have to worry about some blowing tin or, or, or uh, plywood blowing through the air. But uh, other than that, I think if people pick up the outdoor stuff, uh, we'll get through this fine. It's uh, moving through fairly rapidly, mm -hmm. about 17 miles an hour. The low level, part we would feel is supposed to stay, uh, you know, about 200 miles to the south of us. And so if it does that, then uh, we don't have to worry about the tropical storm per se, just these, uh, just these uh, gale kind of winds. Mm, but yeah, but by no means does that mean we're not going to get some wind. It will be rainy yeah. and everything. So of course, as we head into uh, Turkey Day, you might want to have a heads up for that if you're planning on celebrating with your family or you know going to one of the many uh, events on, on Guam. Yeah, you know what people are going to think probably early tomorrow morning? We got a tropical storm. 
and so and so that's what they're going to think i'm mm -hmm. sure and uh, so it'll be wet, windy rainy and uh and uh so i'm not sure what the government's going to decide on uh you know uh, uh setting conditions or uh or closing things so I'll let them make those decisions. Well, on that note, I saw a lot of you in the comment stream were asking, what condition are we in right now? Do we have school? Guam, at the moment, as we're live streaming this right now, condition of readiness for still right now. So uh, things as normal as they can be right now, but, you know, good folks like Chip and his crew um, keeping us abreast of everything like that. And, Chip, I don't, I don't want to belabor the point too much, and you touched on it very, very lightly in there, but you said there is a possible another storm following us up on the tail end of it and everything, but we'll, we'll get to that once we get through this one. Yeah. In other words, uh, what we're seeing out there is uh, a situation where we see these wave trains. And so we'll see a storm, and if it's a big storm, then upstream from that, it will create another wave of low pressure. And so we're watching an area there. The models say that we're going to see something like that. They're not, they're not bringing it over us or anything like that, but it's too early to mm -hmm. tell exactly where that storm will go okay. or even if it will develop all right well chip good to see you as always good yeah. man and uh, we wish you and your family the very best uh, thanksgiving hope yeah. happy holidays and we might see you um here very very soon yeah same to you all and okay and one more thing we, we want to say I've, I've been covering chip and the very fine work that he does happy birthday sir thanks yeah yeah the 30 fifth anniversary of my 39th birthday <laughs> you guys out there do the arithmetic and everything fig figure out that but you know good guy it's been a real pleasure working with you all these yeah. years and everything so yeah yeah same here many happy returns well thank you all right and, uh, we'll uh, i'm sure we'll see you again before i retire oh boy <laughs> well uh that's chip guard and remember everybody for guam and the marianas at this point guam is in a tropical storm warning that means we are probably going to get uh, some brisk wind Probably a little bit of rain as we head to Thanksgiving, but you will be able to find everything that's going on on the social media properties of KUAM. Just check us out at KUAM News. From the Department of Homeland Security and Civil Defense, I'm Jason Salas with KUAM Digital. We'll see you real soon.